In this video, we're going to begin to look at what are the evolutionary forces that change populations' allele frequencies. And we're going to focus primarily on one of them. But the two main forces that cause evolutionary change are natural selection, traits that improve survival reproduction will accumulate or become more common within the population. These are what we call adaptive changes, things that make the individual better fit with their environment, give them a better chance of surviving and reproducing and passing those traits on. And genetic drift, random chance events change allele frequencies. So selection works on all populations, but drift primarily affects mostly small populations, and we'll talk more about that later. So this is random change. So you can see the bird eating the certain types of beetles or colors of beetles, whereas just beetles getting randomly stepped on. So natural selection. Selection acts on any trait that affects survival and reproduction. There's predation selection, there's physiological selection, and sexual selection. And we'll talk about each of those a little bit. Predation selection. Predation selection works with both predators and their prey. So it creates certain behaviors. Uh, it can cause or create or modify camouflage or mimicry, affects speed, physical and chemical defenses. So one example, uh, butterflies, some butterflies taste really bad, so animals like a, like a blue jay here, eats the butterfly, gets sick. He's like, no, nah, I'm not eating that guy anymore. A mimic shrimp might look like them, but not take the time of producing the, the bad-tasting chemicals. So you can see the monarch versus the viceroy butterfly. Speed, like the cheetah, horns for defense, thorns, uh, chemical defenses like hot, hot chemicals and peppers. Physiological selection acts on body function, becoming more resistant to a disease, being able to use oxygen, food, and water in different, more efficient ways, biochemical versatility, being able to use different types of energy sources, or being able to protect oneself from injury. So an example here, 5.5 million years ago, the Arctic, Antarctic Ocean freezes over. It, there were certain fish produced an antifreeze-like glycoprotein that allowed them to, to survive in the very cold temperatures in the Antarctic Ocean at the time. Dogs pee on trees. Why don't trees pee on dogs? Obviously, I think the answer is probably pretty obvious there, but you get the idea. Um, a dog, dog urine has ammonia in it. Ammonia is an animal waste, but it's a plant nutrient. Then sexual selection. Again, this works with reproductive success. Being able to attract a mate allows more successful reproduction. The fertility of the gametes, how likely it is that the gametes will get fertilized and, repro and grow to maturity and produce a baby. Successful rearing off offspring, not just giving birth to the offspring, but helping them survive that adolescent stage into adulthood. So just some examples here. In the, in, the, in the animal kingdom, it's usually the females that do the choosing of the males based on certain traits. Uh, lions, manes, and color would be one example of this. You can see darker, larger, darker manes correlate to higher testosterone, which means better nutrition, better health, and so on. But it can impose a cost to the males because they're hot. They may not blend as well with the environment, things like that. So sexiness, if you will, is a fitness marker. If you're able to attract a, a mate, you're more likely to be able to, to pass your genes onto your offspring. Sexual selection acts on all sexually reproducing species. The trait that gets you the mates um, 
often results in something we call sexual dimorphism, where males and females look very much different from one another. Uh, it can influence both the, the sh what you look like and the behavior. Males often do courtship rituals or compete with other males for the right to mates and so on. Sometimes what attracts a mate can be in opposition to natural selection. It can make you less likely to survive in your environment, but more likely to attract an, a mate. So there's got to be a balance there. For instance, a male peacock. Lots of feathers, very attractive to the female, but not really good at avoiding predators. Coevolution is when two or more species affect one another's evolution. Predator-prey relationships, uh, disease and the host relationship, the competitive species, the mutualistic relationship, all of those are examples of where coevolution can occur. So how does selection affect populations specifically? There's different types of selection. But in all cases, they change the average trait of the population. So in our first example here, you see the, the distribution shifting to the right. That's directional selection when the whole distribution doesn't change shape, but it gets shifted one way or the other. An example of this giraffe neck versus horse size, horse neck size. Stabilizing selection where you have more individuals that have the most common phenotype and the distribution becomes more narrow. Human birth weight is an example of this. And lastly, disruptive selection, where you have both extremes are favored over the most common phenotype and you end up with what we call a bimodal distribution or two peaks in areas that were once extremes that are now the most common and the, what was the most common becomes far less common. Rock pocket.